Tango One coming at you here with a, a different video. Um, it's just an, it's, uh, it explains how I make my what they call my raised magic lead. Um, so I don't know how this is going to go, but bear with me because I've got an um, editing program and I'm just um, <coughs> trying to make sure I understand it fully. So it's going to be hit and miss along this one. <laughs> Right, the first thing, first thing we need to do is get ourselves, well this is why I get myself some round leather. Now, belting leather I think um, it's termed as. Now, because I'm going to, because I'm going to put this on the, roll this on here, um, it actually, it, it's bent that, it's coiled that way off of the reel. So I want to have it so that it goes up the opposite way so that the overlap is on this side not on the underside then naturally it will take it will take that shape right first thing you need to do is I've just measured along here I'm not going to I'm not going to um, bore you with all the measurements but the first thing I need to do is I'll bring it down this way a bit so you can see is I'm going to just skive in some of this, take off this level here. And like so. A bit high there, so I'm just going to... And this is how all, all my, um, my leads are done. This is strong old belting leather, this is. Um, I'm trying to get my hand out of the way so you can see. If that's not, if it's too far away, um, you know, a bit of a job there. But what I can do is I can always zoom in on it so that you can see there. Now you can see what I've taken away. I've just taken away that piece there. Well, it's not very much if you look at how much I've dug into. It's very little. Now I'm going to do it on the other side. I'm going to use a splitter. The little ticking you can hear is apparently I think I can only have about half an hour on the video. So what I've done is um, I'll put the timer on it and then I can I'll uh, try and fade it in. Hopefully, right. I'm just going to split this one. Right, I like so. Same with this one. I like so. so now what we have is we have a piece of split leather. Okay. Now. That's it and that's going to be folded back like that against that mark on the so. Right, so let's put that out of the way. Not bore with you with all the other stuff. Um, it's, it's quite a quite a um, involved job really. Sorry if I'm rabbiting on, I'm just trying to talk you through it the best I can. Now what I do is I have my own little trade here I do that is uh, get the old staple gun. I don't staple it in tight, tight, but I um I staple it in anyway, just so that this, this helps me. It holds it down while I'm trying to glue it. <laughs> right, here's my little jar. First thing I do then is I get, uh, yeah, get this one. Just get me glue brush now. All right. Oh, that looks like that one. 
cards mixing with that. Bear with me. So I'll put a bit of thinners in my um in the last of the glue tin, and uh, it's it's set on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix that in. Because what happens is this this glue does get thick over time. If it's been here a while, every time you have the lid open, air's getting to it. I've got the I've got the door open because uh, the fumes are quite potent. And so I've been in this in this game a bloody long time, working with these um, high vapor glues. So you know. I'm a bit old in the tooth now to start worrying too much about inhaling all that, but um, prevention is better than cure, but the damage is already done, but no point in making it any worse than what it is, so that's what I do. Alright, I'll just put that on there, and I want Wipe my old screwdriver off so that um, I think that's that done. Oh, yeah. It's been very hot yesterday and it's going to be very hot again today. So I have to get up here in this shed early in the morning to. Um, To get as much done as I possibly can. What I'm doing now is I'm just dipping this into the glue. That's it. Okay, I'll put that on there, it doesn't matter really. That's it, I've got to shave a piece off of there, I forgot to do that so. Eating into that is uh, first old bit of leather that is. <coughs> right. right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape this end off. I'll show you. I'm going to go over there. Just going to shave this piece off. Let's bring it in close on that one, just as you can see. That's it, I'll go down this way so you can see it. Okay, you see that one alright. Let me bring it down a bit more so you got it in view. Okay, and I'm just going to take that straight down there. So it's feathered down. Oh, where are we? To a wedge. Do the same on the other end, but I'll just let that glue go off a little bit for then now. Um, the reason I've, um, I'm doing this one is because as this gentleman just uh, wants me to purchase one, he's been. He's actually got on my mate Chris. Oh, Chris, I'm, I'm desperate for one of these raised magic leads, but he says, um, "Could you forward my details on to him?" Um, and, I, and reading what he said, um, oh, it's about this Labrador that he's actually rescued. And if he's watching this video, you know, you know who he is. I'll just say his name's Adam, that's all. Um, and um, he rescued this dog because I think um, at the time the, uh, the couple were going through a divorce or something, but that's by the by. Um, so he's, he's taken this dog in and it, and it was bought with all the papers and everything else. It's from gun. Gun, gun dog working stock, so it's not a um, it's not just an ordinary Labrador. Now, 
the reason I'm just using this piece of well, let's let's move that out or you can't see what I'm doing I forgot that that's it um, sorry about that all I've done is just glued the other end of that round leather um, now where was I I'm just going to glue this panel leather now and I'll just use this little bit of cloth underneath here I don't know if you can see it yes you can um, just so I don't get all the glue on the um, on my bench anyway so he's got this uh, Labrador and um, when I got the message from Chris I thought it's from a different person uh, had this dog but he, ex he was explaining to Chris how he come by this dog and um, lo and behold it the message was regarding this Labrador and I thought oh right well I, I do have another um, collar and lead here um, I always try and keep one spare but um, the collars that I do for Springers is a different length to what I do for Labradors i.e. the reason being a Labrador's neck, 9 out of 10 when fully grown, is about 18 inches long, uh, you know, round. So, um, these have to be made at a different length. Now, I could be like a lot of some people are out there. Oh, well, that'll do, just send that, he won't know. Um, that's not my attitude. My attitude is, well, if it's for a particular dog, then it's no good sending a collar for a Jack Russell for a bloke that's got a Labrador. Now the Springers, they're not much, they're not much smaller, but there is a difference. And the important factor is that um, they uh, is the length of this collar. Now the length of this collar has got to be such that it's um, Just the uh, ring that's attached to the lead is just off the ground to get the correct length. Let me just slither this one off. I nearly forgot, didn't I? There you go, that's that one done. Now, I'm just going to put this on here like so. Obviously, a lot of te tedious, you know, stuff that I'm doing, but I enjoy doing it. Bear with me, just going to get me out of it. Yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy doing it because, um, oh, I just like working with leather, yeah, I suppose, in a nutshell. So. There we go, I'm just laying this down here now, so I've got all the flat side, one side, and I'm, I'm pulling it fairly taunt, so that's, uh, <coughs> right, like that. Now what I'm going to do, this is the reason why I've stapled it, so it stays up where it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now glue the, the leather and you're probably saying oh, this is like watching paint dry this is look you've shown us how to bloody glue something now well <laughs> um, you can you can watch it if you want um, or you can turn it off if you find it boring. I mean, that's your prerogative, but I'm just trying to give some bit of um, formal information of how I go about doing what I do as a hobby now. So what I'm going to do with that bit is I'll get hold of this little bit of stuff here and I'll just pick that up and I'll just put that on there to keep it away from the, keep it away from the uh, grade leather panel leather, whatever you want to call it. 
Oops. As I say, I'm not um, there you go, I'm not too bothered, that's that's going on fine. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just fire up my um do I need that again? I probably do. I can use a little one for that. So I was just thinking aloud here, turn that off, put that on. I just leave that um I'll leave the brushes to soak in a bit of this all-purpose thinners. Um, it does evaporate over, uh, you know, a couple of days, but I just keep topping it up. Right, just bear with me. There's a little bit of noise coming on here. I'm just going to use my air dryer. <laughs> That's a laugh, isn't it? I ain't got no air. <laughs> I'm just rapidly uh, drying it out. Um, otherwise, it is like watching paint dry. <laughs> I hope you can hear me over this thing. There you go, that weren't too bad, was it? Right, take that off of there. And then, what I do, I get that as middle as the diddle as I can. That's it. I'll just give it a bit of a half roll like that. He says, why are you doing that? And then I roll it halfway this way. So you don't get any air pockets underneath that bit of... Um, and what I do is I pull this up here because I've stapled it either end. I pull it up here and I have my fingers underneath so I can bring it up to the sides and I know that I'm keeping that flat piece as it should be oh dear. that's it There, that's lifted, that's no problem. Whew. Right then, I'm doing it in this arch shape because it keeps uh, it's following the, the, the natural um, arch of. of the round leather belting and um, so I don't lose that shape. Oh my goodness, that's not going to. that down there not fiddling about but um, you can start skipping bits and pieces and then you wonder why it all goes wrong so you know it's, um, it's not always as straightforward as it may appear but um, trouble is this glue it's not very forgiving once you've uh, stuck it down it uh, it's a pig to pull apart and I'll take my staples out there because that's done the job that I wanted it to do and uh, Oh, I hasten to add, you need, you know, you need to have time to um, watch this video because it's going to go on quite a while. This is the first time, as I said, I've ever had a go at doing a full video. 
from start to finish it may go in one or two parts I don't know but what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and um, blend it in blend in number two with number one and, and vice versa so let's see how it goes now what, I, what I'll probably do when it comes to stitching I'll just uh, I'll turn the machine, uh, turn the camera off because otherwise you're gonna, all you're going to be doing is sitting there listening to the machine thumping along. But there we go. So that's it. I've got that done like that now. I don't know if you can see that. That's that. And I'm just left with the ends now. So what to do with that? Is I've got a nice big punch. Just a big one I use, it doesn't have to be, you know, that. Cut off the ends. Do the same this one. Like so. Right now what I do is <coughs> get that old magic marker and I'm going to measure that three inches along there because that's where it's going to be folding. Do the same with this end as well. Right that's going to go through there. Done. Put that back on there, stop it drying out. Starting to get warm in this shed now. Oh, running commentary they call this, don't they? <laughs> right, I'm going to now put that right in line with that marker and cut the punches like that. And everything falls to pieces. I do the same on the other side. I don't know if you can see that, can you? Just bring that in for you. The same again, and I. Have we got it there? Yeah, can do. Can put that in there. Give that a couple of punches. The only reason I do it a bit further forward is because. Uh, Sorry about that. Um, it's right underneath the, the leg of the bench. So now what I do, I'll try and bring me working closer where I can so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to do the self same thing again on this other end. Get out and on this one. See, it sounds a lot more solid, doesn't it? And you don't have to keep hitting it and hitting it. Oh, we've got five minutes before the half hour. And then I'll fade this out and go into part two, I think, because I don't know if it's going to work. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to cut along this. I like say so. right into against that leather, and from there I'm going to go to half half from there. I'm, from there I'm going to go halfway to where the other mark is. I'm going to go halfway along, which is about there, and I'm going to aim for that marker there. That's it. I like so. That's that one. Let's get that right. That's it. Turn it round. Do the same on this end. Cut that close to the leather. Right to that marker. Bring that up. So it's in line with that one. Right. 
en de gemaakt is te zijn. Right, so you're left with two pits like that now. Right, which leaves you that. Which I don't like, that ain't right, is it? This is not crucial, this is not crucial, this bit here, because <laughs> it's being folded over like that. So, Having done that one, I'm now going to get hold of this end and do the same again. Sorry, I'm getting in the habit of working down the other end of the bench, and it's um, every time I do that, it uh, takes it out of camera shot, doesn't it? So, just got to keep remembering to bring it forward. Right, that's going to go there, and I'm going to guess that halfway along there, which is going to be there, that's what I'm going for. Fold that up the side so I can marry it up with that, hopefully. Yes, it's definitely starting to get warm now. It's uh, nine o'clock in the morning, and uh, oh, God, that's, let's just give a little bit of a bang in here. Just see if I can flatten this out a little bit. It may do. I don't know. doesn't seem to be making much difference so I think we'll go with that. Right, okay, sorry about the banging, let's put that up there out of the way. Whew. Come around a bit maybe. Sorry about that, I'm just trying to bring it around a bit. Now, what we need to do is, because this is for a Labrador, I need a couple of rings. These are stainless steel rings, they're not uh, brass or um, iron uh, plated, nickel plated. They're, um, they're stainless steel, solid stainless steel, so to you, which means it won't rust. So, let's get that. There you go, so I tend to just keep pushing that in with me now, just to, you know, make sure it's in there. Right, now what I'm going to do now this should uh, re-stick so let's have a look see what we do I'll just put, a, put the old heat gun on it a bit Just makes the glue a bit tackier again. Put my ring on, line that up so it's nice and level with that one. Oh, there we go, time out. I'm gonna have to call this end of part one. Part two coming right, out. Hello, soon. this is part two which I'm hoping to blend in with part one. Um, let's put the timer on just in case. I'm just trying to cover me back here. There you go, another 30 minutes. Tick tock, tick tock. 
Right now, the next stage, you see, you see me, um, you see me do that. I've, I've stitched it up. Um, I've done that because the machine was on, so I thought I'd do it while it was off camera. And then I just, I've just closed the leather up to it, like I so. Now, next job I've got to do is put one on the other end. But I learnt the hard way. I put the ring on. And then I try to put it through itself, which means bending this, this, bending this backwards through the, through the ring, you know, hard work. So, to make sure we get it round the right way, I have it so that the waist is on, on the bottom, the round bits on the top, and then I just put this through there, like so. Pull it over that. Oh, there you go. Pull that right way down there. And we end up with that then. Now, I'll put my ring on. Up to that mark. Glue it down. It'll always try and lift near the ring because it's the most restrictive point. So I'll still give it an hammering to make sure that the, that the glue's got a hold of it. Now bear with me a minute and I'll just be on the machine. You'll hear me going. It's not worth turning it off. Right, let's go through here. stitching I'll do it on these ends are um, all double stitched. I don't you know I don't do uh, and it's quite a large stitch because if you do close together the stitches what happens is uh, it's the uh, same sort of principle as a very similar to a, a, a stamp with all perforation marks around the stamp. And what, happen, what happens is um, it becomes weak and just tears. So um, that's why I do a large stitch. Prevents that. Anyway, I'm just making sure I'm getting all in the same holes. I'm not double stitching that way then. It's, it's no good. Uh, done. It's no good double stitching if you're not if you're not going to go in the same holes. So there you go, I'll now double stitch that if you can see that. So I've I've gone from here, I've gone down to the ring and then come all the way back again. All in the same holes. Because <coughs> if you went um if you went to do it in a different hole, just, you know, double stitch, over, over stitch it, without looking to see if you're going in the same holes, um, all you're doing is uh, you're putting a hole in between the two stitch holes you just made, which um, is not going to do any good whatsoever. So I'll show you on the front side, the side that matters. Take that one out there. Yes, I did. See, that's the side that matters. But you're only going to see half of it because the other half is going to be closed up like that. See, you, you've not got much of it to show. You see that? Get it right, I'm trying to get the angle right in here. Oh, there it is. See, you've only got a little bit showing. And then what I do is I just bang this on the anvil. Yeah. 
very hard to match these two up every time. So I end up having to um, trim it. That's just me being finicky really. But I like them to line up. I'm just going to put a bit of heat on that just to make sure that that um, does stick. gets hot. Now I'll just squish it together like that and I'll get me nail and I'll do it so they come together in the middle. Now I'll get me little angle pliers and I'll push it like that just to make sure I've got it in there. Once I've got it in there, then I'll just uh, oh, put the uh, bridle down there to make sure it's got it, which it has. So we now end up with something like that. Okay. I don't know if you can see this all right. Oh, excuse me. I don't know if you can see this all right, but last time I've done it. Um, uh, with the camera in this position it, it worked out okay so to me it's looking a bit all orangey and everything but I know it won't turn out that way he says <laughs> see uh, all right, there we go that's that now stage three it's going to take a bit of time well so what I'm going to do oh, put the lid on the glue is I'm just going to turn this camera off a minute while I'm stitching because it's going to take some time to stitch this because um, I've got to change my uh, machine foot over as well from flat stitch to a, a piping foot um, so again I'm going to try and blend this one in to, to this video that I'm going to switch off just now so I'll right, catch you in a minute back. this is part three which I'm going to blend in hopefully so you're not having to keep clicking on part one, two and three. So it should all be one video times I've finished it, <laughs> he says. Right, anyway, I've just um, stitched that up. As I said, I've just gone to the machine, stitched it up. You don't want to watch that because it's boring. So there, there's the stitching I've done. I've just done in there. And as I say, I've had to use, um, I've had to use a piping foot for that, uh, which meant changing it over. Um, this is the pot oh no the piping foot's still on there but I've had to make that because uh, the mach my, the machine um, which is a Seco CH7B it um, it's an expensive machine but they don't do a piping foot for it and a piping foot is something to do this sort of work with so all that remains now really is for me to trim this off and then put some wax on it so now that that's done you you can just pull this over here pull the ring over here bring it back down and then you've got there's it now all i've got to do is put put a stop on there which will basically be one of these uh, bear with me there's your stop going on there like that let me let me just I'm going to, before we go any further. Let me just um, cut off the first bit. Um, where are we get? Yeah, then you'll see what I mean. Is that the underside? That's the underside. All right. That's uh, right. I'm going to cut this so that. We can get that um, stop on there, temporary, so you can see what it will look like without this extra waste leather on it. I'm cutting very close to the stitch. Um, bring that down because I don't want that there. It's going to obstruct me from cutting the very end piece. Go. 
so you know uh, that's what you will have that's what the finished item will look like and I then will just get the stitch point as uh, doing the rest of it I'll just get the pieces at the stop like that I'll put a rivet through there like uh, so it'll be oiled up and that will slide as we stop you must use this stop to bring against this ring if you don't when you're out in the field and it's training when it puts his head down to hunt be a spaniel or a lab that's when the loop will get suddenly go bigger and that's when it will, could fall off of his head and you suddenly you've got a dog running loose somewhere like that you don't want it to be there may be other dogs about or or worse still he may clear off you've lost your lead you've got to go hunting around for that but your first priority is to get your dog get hold of your dog so without further ado um, right without further ado um, that is about it and you know I hope I hope you've enjoyed it I can just finish all this off later um, because it's uh, it's just tedious. You can see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut cut this surplus off. Let's do it this way. I'm just going to keep cutting this surplus off so you end up with that. Okay. And um, then I'm going to oh, put some balm on it so it can feed into the leather. And... Um, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Uh, hope this has enlightened some people as to how, you, how I go about doing my collars. Um, and there's no more to be said really than that. I'm just going to finish this off before it gets too hot. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. It's been informative to you, I hope. Um, but that's my way. I just thought, because every time I, st I start something, I show the finished job. Well, it's nice to see something where you've gone through it. Um, I'm thinking, oh, that's how he does that. And, oh, that's how he does... You know, I'm, I don't know what I'm saying. So, um, you know, it... Uh, I'm rabbiting on again, aren't I? <laughs> I'll catch you all on the next one. Cheerio. Right, that's all that done now. So all that remains is um, to uh, upload this video, um, put it on my YouTube after I played around with it for a bit. Um, and my next project is uh, now I've got those out of the way. This gentleman wants this, these leads and dummies <coughs> collars as soon as he can. Well, he's going to get them tomorrow now. So I'll pack them away. And my next project is going to be this. It's going to take me a couple of days to make this. This is... Uh, can't go no bigger than that. This is, yeah, you've guessed it. One of my waistcoats. Dummy waistcoats. So, there you go. I've just got the material for it now. Um, I've just got another hide. Um, and all that, all that wastage of that hide, it's not, not too bad really. I've got, what have I got there? I'll tell, I'll tell you what I've got. It's full width. They come out at 30 inches, they come out at. So, 30 inches to make them leads at three quarters of an inch each time. And then that dear little bit of waste that I had there. I ain't done too bad. I don't know how many leads I actually made. So, without further ado, I'll catch you on the next video. Cheerio.